Hi, my name is Tom Talby. I'm a fishery biologist with Alaskan Department of Fish and Game, and today I'm going to show you how to dip net fish in an eddy. I'm here on the banks of the Copper River in the Chittenden Subdistrict, and there's been a lot of fish moving upstream the Copper River, so let's get started. Most people eddy fish down the area we call Wood Canyon. This is accessed primarily from the O'Brien Creek Road, which starts from O'Brien Creek and goes all the way to Haley Creek. It's actually the old Copper River Railroad grade, and it's really more of a trail these days. Travel on this trail is at your own risk. No maintenance is done beyond O'Brien Creek. You can't get a car or truck down this trail. Access is by ATV, mountain bike, or foot. About a mile past O'Brien Creek, a landslide occurred in 2001 that blocked the road to highway vehicles. As a warning, the trail is extremely rough in some sections, and several ATVs have slid off the trail and riders have been injured. But there can be a lot of good eddies to fish in this area. Most of the time, you're gonna to have to climb down a steep bank with loose rocks to get to your fishing spot. It's a good idea to have a backpack for hauling your gear down and getting your fish back up. It's also a good idea to secure your dip net so it doesn't get caught in the brush. And there are bears generally in this area, so take all necessary precautions. Another option is to pay for a charter to drop you off at a fishing spot in the canyon. If it's your first time going to Chitna, this can be a good way to get started. First thing you need when you go dip netting is to have your sport fishing license and your dip net permit on you when you're dip netting. <clears throat> There's a few things I like to have, and which include a uh, set of rubber gloves, insulated or just regular rubber gloves. It gives you good grip on your dip net handle and provides some additional warmth. And if you're using a dip net with aluminum pole, it keeps that black aluminum from rubbing off on your hands. Second, either a, a good stout rock or a piece of hickory handle or something to knock the fish out so you can handle it better once you land it. And finally, a pair of shears or a knife to clip the tail fins. I actually prefer poultry shears because it's a lot easier to use than a knife and they tend to be less easy to lose control of when they get start getting slimy. And remember, when you're dip netting along the river, you should always wear a PFD or a life vest. I just like to mention something about tying off. This is where people tie a rope around their waist and affix it to shore on a tree or rock to keep themselves from falling in. The main thing is to keep the rope short enough to prevent you from actually falling in the river. And secondly, do it safely and make sure you're familiar with the knots and harnessing system that you're using. I personally dip net in spots where it's safe enough to stand without worrying about that, and so I don't tie off myself. So now to determine if you found an eddy site, the easiest way I've found is to just throw a stick in and see if the current's going opposite the main current. And the reason why this is a good spot to fish is that it actually keeps your net bag open so that when the fish are swimming upstream, they'll actually swim into your net. So that looks like a good eddy. So now we want to take our net and make sure that we have a good spot here where there's no rock blocking fish passage up or below our net. So I put the net in and try to find a depth where the net's just about covered and then move the net upstream and downstream of that site to make sure there's nothing blocking it. And this site here is good. It's clean all the way above and below so now I put the net back where I started where it's covered and just leave it sit. And you can see now that the bag is pushed open by the current. I'm also right now feeling a little bit of reverse there where the net collapses on itself. But that's fine because the eddies, if it's a good eddy, it'll open that net back up. Now when you start fishing and a fish hits your net, you'll feel a bump or something hit the, your net handle. There's two ways to bring it in. One is just to lift the net quickly out of the water, like that. The other way is to bring your net up, especially when you're fishing deeper water, hand over hand quickly like that. That gets the fish caught in the net as you're pulling the net back out. Sometimes the fish will hit right away when you put your net in, other times it may take an hour. If it goes much longer than that, the fishing's either gonna be really slow or you might wanna find a different location.
here's a fish. So now if you cut the gills, you can bleed the fish immediately and get yourself some good quality flesh. And then I'm going to clip the tail fins per regulation to identify as personal use fish. Each tail fin needs to be clipped. So then I'm just going to wash the blood off the fish. At this point, some people like to put them on a stringer and put them back in the river to keep them cool. Personally, I just prefer to clear, cut the gill out and gut the fish and find a cool spot on shore and put them in a the cooler right away. So there we have a nice Copper River sockeye. There's a fish. So I'm done fishing for now, so the last thing I need to do is record my harvest on my permit before I leave the fishing site. I like to keep my permit in a plastic bag, that way it stays dry while I'm fishing. And also you need to have a pen along because you're supposed to record your harvest in ink. So you need to put the date and the number of fish by species which you caught on the permit. So I hope this has been helpful and good luck fishing.